Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Karen. It's great to be with you. My apologies for being a little bit late. I just left the, uh, the prayer breakfast. Uh, 4,000 people from all 50 countries and over 150 nations. So it was quite a logistical nightmare, but uh, uh, very uplifting uh, for the most part and um, a terrific way to start your day, even if it was at 4.45 this morning. Uh, I'm part of the Congressional Bible Study and Singers that uh, uh, they got to uh, open the uh, prayer breakfast up, and it was, uh, it was terrific. So I appreciate your uh, indulgence in, in my being a little bit tardy here. And thanks to, to Lisa and uh, Rohit and, um, and just everyone at ACAMS for having me here with you this morning. Yes, I'm, I'm the, the number two ranking Republican on financial services and on House Foreign Affairs, but it's the work that I do in human trafficking and for um, uh, the most vulnerable in our society, the humanitarian and human rights work, the work that I do for, for women and children, um, the most vulnerable in our society that keeps me, keeps me coming back uh, and, and leaving my home in St. Louis, Missouri, and uh, coming here to do, do the, people's, the people's work. The fight against trafficking has been, as I said, one of my most important endeavors since I very first came to Congress. And I'm working with my colleagues to uh, effectively address how traffickers profit and evade detection through money laundering, and, uh, and the banking system, and I know you all have been very much involved in that. Trafficking crimes are incredibly difficult to prosecute, given that they operate under, kind of under the radar of law enforcement. A State Department's Trafficking in Persons Office ran the numbers and found that a trafficker is more likely to be hit by lightning than to be trafficked or to be prosecuted for a trafficking offense that they committed. So there are many obstacles to these investigations. Uh, you've got cases and, and victims who are oftentimes difficult to identify. Uh, you have survivors that are um, oftentimes unwilling to testify. And then thirdly, you have evidence uh, on smartphones and, and such that is becoming much more difficult for law enforcement to access. The 2019 Trafficking in Persons uh, report shows that trafficking prosecutions may actually be declining in the United States and in Western countries. No, there this is a, a troubling trend, but I believe that the financial services industry can help address some of these obstacles. Financial crimes and money laundering can sometimes be easier pathways to put traffickers behind bars, so we must use every tool that we possibly can. Equipping and training law enforcement and financial institutions on indicators of trafficking are critical ways uh, we can prevent more victims from being exploited. In 2018, I, I chaired a financial services oversight an investigation subcommittee hearing examining how traffickers exploit financial markets. We learned that if banks engage more effectively in innovative network analysis and data analytics, rather than focusing on filing uh, large numbers of, of SARS, of the suspicious activity reports, we could greatly increase uh, case detection. Regulators need to recognize and reward financial institutions that are developing new techniques, establishing public-private partnerships, as you all are involved in, and detecting uh, cryptocurrency payments. This year, I am working with Chairwoman Waters to ensure these issues remain uh, front and center in the Financial Services Committee agenda. We are working on several pieces of legislation that will help Congress and law enforcement and industry, I believe, too, um, to respond to human trafficking, both sex trafficking and labor trafficking. In October, the House passed the uh, Corporate Transparency Act. Uh, America lags behind our peers in collecting what's called the, the beneficial ownership 
information that helps expose the anonymous shell companies that exploit the most vulnerable. This bill would, would close the loopholes that allow criminals to rapidly move money and conceal illicit profits in the U.S. banking system. Passage of the End Banking for Human Trafficking Act that was written by Congressman Royce and now led by, by Representative uh, Fitzpatrick would increase interagency coordination on combating illicit financing of trafficking. It would improve how financial transactions are identified and improve how banks are, um, uh, can eliminate money laundering related to trafficking. Last year, Congressman Juan Vargas and I introduced the Find Trafficking Act, which passed the House in January of 2019. We know that traffickers are increasingly using the anonymity of virtual currencies, like Bitcoin, for instance, to finance networks of exploitation both online and offline. <clears throat> virtual currencies can help criminals avoid detection and prosecution, a practice that creates an, an unprecedented challenge for financial regulators and law enforcement and prosecutors. Cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, irresponsible payment processors, and gift card processors enable the growth of websites that uh, continue to facilitate trafficking, including Erotic Review, hum uh, Humaniplex, Night Shift, and, and others. While some of these sites have shut down, a number of them have shut down after the seizure of Backpage.com with that 93 count indictment and the passage of my Fight Online Sex Trafficking Act, FOSTA, uh, others do still continue to operate. The Find Trafficking Act would provide policymakers with more information on how traffickers are anonymously transferring money and re repatriating these illicit funds into the formal banking system. In 2018, I also introduced and passed the Empowering Financial Institutions to Fight Human Trafficking Act. This is much like the, the STATS program, uh, project that you all are very much leading and involved in. This particular piece of legislation would make it easier for nonprofits to, to share information with financial institutions and to help identify money laundering and other suspicious activity. Financial crime intelligence sharing systems modeled after the U.S. system, such as the United Kingdom's Joint Money Laundering Intelligence Task Force, have already incorporated this type of information and uh, sharing relationship into their regulations. It is imperative that the United States continues to set the global standards for anti-money laundering and human trafficking prevention. I am working with our nonprofit partners, of which there are so very many, and I know many are here and represented uh, today, to find additional ways that we can support collaboration between nonprofits, banks, and law enforcement. We need to find better ways to, to, to feed direct intelligence on illicit activity into the banking system to stop uh, the scourge of of human trafficking. It's a very big task, and I'm, I'm certainly grateful for how uh, industry is stepping up to the plate uh, in many cases, and I look forward to working with you as we, we move this ball forward to protect truly the most, um, most vulnerable in our society. I appreciate the opportunity to uh, address you uh, here this morning. I look forward. I think we're going to do a, a few questions. Is that right, uh, Karen, before I head, head on back to the... Uh, the Hill, but thank you very much for all that you do. Well, thank you so much. That was, uh, you know, again, fascinating. And, uh, you know, you have this commitment uh, to fighting human trafficking. Where did that begin for you, and what can you oh, say? Oh, goodness. About that? Well, um, I had the opportunity to serve uh, as a, a United States ambassador in a very rich and wealthy area of Western Europe. Uh, it was a, a haven for bank secrecy and money laundering, much of what I did in my, during my time 
in, uh, in Luxembourg was also shutting down um, terrorist financing that was being laundered through the, the country. But as you, as you, if you are, in fact, a United States ambassador and, and working uh, with uh, the State Department, you learn about the TIP report, the Trafficking in Persons report. And I really delved into this. And uh, there I was in, in, in rich and wealthy uh, Western European country. And I saw with my own eyes uh, people mainly from men, women, children being trafficked, mainly from Eastern European, Baltic uh, countries, uh, both labor trafficking and sex trafficking into, uh, into Western Europe. And I was appalled by what I saw and what was happening as I did my duty as a U.S. ambassador to, to uh, comply and, and do the TIP report and encourage uh, the country uh, and, and other Western European countries and to, to step up and do something to shut this down. So that was the first time it, I, my eyes had ever been opened to this, this horrible scourge and underbelly of of our society. Then I came home after four years of serving uh, to my, my, my little municipality in St. Louis, Missouri, and in the suburbs of Baldwin. And I began to delve into it in uh, my own country and found out, in fact, human trafficking was hiding in plain sight in every cul-de-sac, every faith community, uh, all socioeconomic backgrounds. Um, it was it was just deplorable, and uh, that was probably where the fire was lit. Um, I'd worked in, 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 in business and industry uh, and in, in public service and politics for a number of years, and decided at that point it was time to put my own name uh, on the yard sign, run for Congress in 2012, and uh, come here to do whatever I could uh, to make a difference for the most vulnerable in our society. So you alluded to... Um the, what, the, the chance of being prosecuted for trafficking is uh, your better chance to be hit by lightning. Yeah. What can be, uh, what are you doing about that? What's, what tools do prosecutors need that you can provide them as a legislator? Well, you know, I, I went through some of the, the legislation here just so that you know that, that we actually are working on pieces of legislation to help, but hang on one second here. But what is, <clears throat> are multiple things. Yeah, I, I believe that you can't solve the ills of society necessarily through legislation. Um, it can help. Uh, I think education and awareness, training, the kinds of gatherings here today um, uh, help us all uh, to, to end the scourge. But, but there are things and tools that, that law enforcement must need. And I can say that passing FOSTA, which was uh, something I was told would never happen, the Fight Online Sex Trafficking Act, uh, and it did multiple things. It used both uh, statutes that were through the prostitution statutes and through the sex trafficking statutes to allow law enforcement at the state, local, and federal level uh, uh, to, to have the tools that they, they needed uh, to pursue these prosecutions. It also gave victims justice and the ability to, to, to sue civilly uh, uh, for those that had victimized and uh, abused them so horrifically. And then it did something that, that I was told we would never be able to get done, which was to, to um, actually go in and amend the, the, the Communications Decency Act, Section 230 of the CDA, uh, and made it clear what congressional con uh, intent was. The CDA, uh, the C uh, Communications Decency Act, Section 230, was written back in 1996, you know, before uh, there was so much happening online. And, and the courts kept ruling with the Backpage.coms of the world and others that this was somehow their, their free speech and their right to, to sell our women and children and young boys uh, online. And these nefarious online websites, and, and they were begging Congress to make clear congressional intent. And I assure you 
then back in 1996, and now today, and back when, pot passed, when FOSTA was passed and signed into law in 2018, it was never Congress's intent to make the internet a red light district. Mm -hmm. If it is a crime offline, it is a crime, in fact, online, period, full stop. So we were able to amend that uh, and, and get that done. Those are the, some of the tools that I think we've been able to offer uh, prosecutors and, and uh, law enforcement uh, to, to en enable them uh, to work on these prosecutions and, and get things um, uh, moving in the, in the right directions. We're passing FOSTA now at the state level and, um, and there are other great pieces of legislation that will also equip and arm um, uh, our, our justice fighters. So I, we don't have much time. I know you have a packed schedule, as is, is the want of a representative uh, in Congress. Um, but this audience is uh, financial institutions, people that are in law enforcement. Any final thing they'd like to say about what, what they can do to help you help them, kind of? Well, there's, there's a couple issues that, were, that are really in, in, in coming to focus for me right now. And I was with the Attorney General uh, uh, Barr, uh, last week, uh, I was with the folks from the Department of Homeland Security, the State Department, uh, uh, prosecutors. I spoke with all the national district attorneys uh, across our, our, our country. And the thing that I am hearing loud and clear is that it is now our next front is, is uh, not just the work that we've done on uh, online sex trafficking, which has disrupted the market incredibly. I can tell you, and it wasn't just the Backpage.coms, it's the others that either it served as a deterrent to bring those sites down, or they went after them. And uh, they will still try and find other ways, but we probably dis disrupted um, year to year about 60% of that market, and now there's really nothing more than just mostly scam and, and spam type um, uh, markets out there. But what I'm hearing from law enforcement and prosecutors is this move towards end-to-end -end encryption that is, uh, we really are, are going to have to focus on. And I had an opportunity in the Financial Services Committee to uh, directly question Mr. Zuckerberg from Facebook. Let me tell you what, on Facebook, Facebook Messenger, their platforms, in 2018 alone, 12 million, in 2018, 12 million images of pornography, child exploitation, trafficking, uh, 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 horrific abuse of, of children were transmitted over the platforms that uh, Facebook owns. In 2018, those 12 million images were able to be passed along to law enforcement and to prosecutors to act on. But with impunity, Mr. Zuckerberg stared at me as I questioned him for uh, a number of minutes. Uh, they intend to go to full-on, end-to-end encryption on everything, including these horrific, illegal, illicit type images. And uh, that's a problem because end-to-end -end encryption uh, is, uh, will not allow law enforcement to have access uh, to what is, is happening. Now, and I, I, I'm, I'm all for one's privacy. I believe in the Fourth Amendment. Um, but I do not believe, I refuse to believe that privacy and lawful access have to be pitted against each other. It does not. Privacy and lawful access do not have to be pitted against each other. Uh, the Attorney General, every prosecutor, DA, Attorneys General, um, Department of Homeland Security, all written letters along with Congress and both, both Senate and House uh, to ask that they not provide end-to-end -end encryption on uh, these uh, illegal illicit activities. And uh, with impunity, they have refused. So, like any industry over time, when, um, when they won't police themselves, 
and do the right thing, and it's perhaps time for Congress to step in. And, um, and I am going to wage a, uh, a war against those that want to continue to exploit and abuse our women, our children, our young boys, um, and do whatever I can to allow law, uh, for law enforcement to have access to, um, uh, to, those, uh, to those kinds of activities. And so we're going to fight that fight. That'll be one of the next things that we do. I think what you all do is so very important. This, the, I, I know I, I missed, I came in while the last panel was, was closing, but the STAT pro project is fantastic. Uh, it, it's just the kind of work that, that industry ought to be doing, uh, bringing together banks and NGOs um, and law enforcement in one, one big repository that uh, allows folks to access that uh, is, is very, very important and will be very useful. It's much like what I, I passed in 2018. I, we're working on a version of that now for this Congress, um, the Empowering Financial Institutions and NGOs. I wanted to give the NGOs safe harbor so that they did not feel like they would be um, uh, sued or gone after for providing the information to the repository. I will continue to fight that fight. I believe in it. Uh, but I also believe in the kind of work that you're doing with the STAT pro project. I think that as many tools as we possibly can give um, uh, to law enforcement, uh, to our prosecutors, uh, to each other. But again, let me start, or let me end where I, where, I, where I started, Kieran, which is this. This is really about education and awareness and, and training, giving voice to this. This is our, a moment in time that we have both domestically here within the United States of America, but also globally for us to, uh, to say it, no. It is, we are not going to allow this kind of, of abuse mm -hmm. and exploitation and victimization in the most horrific and horrendous way of the most vulnerable in our, in our society and community. So I just thank you for what ACAMS is doing. You're a leader in this, and uh, it's just an honor to be with you today. Well, Representative Ann Wagner, thank you so much for being here. We are honored. Uh, I would like to actually call to the stage our president and managing director, Rohit Sharma, and we'd like to present an award oh, for the lovely. tremendous public service that you do. I mean, we're just honored to have you, and thank you, and please join me in. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm grateful. Thank you. Of appreciation. Oh, thank you. I, I stand on all of your shoulders. Uh, this is to be shared with each and every one of you. Thank you very much for the work that you do. It's an, an honor uh, to get to, to fight this battle alongside you. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.